This Sunday, we have a special message for you from the session of the Presbyterian Church of Vinton. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Have a great weekend. We miss you and look forward to seeing you. We are thinking about you as we celebrate this weekend. Be safe and have a happy Memorial Day. You are in our thoughts and prayers. We look forward to when we can worship together again. Happy Memorial Day to all our friends and family at the Vinton Presbyterian Church. As you worship at home today, I invite you to participate responsibly or in the unison prayers and readings as you feel comfortable. Let us join now in our call to worship. Shout for joy, sing songs of praise, for God reigns over all the earth. God has gone up with a shout. Sound the trumpets and sing songs of praise. Jesus tells us that repentance and forgiveness are to be offered in his name. Therefore, let us confess our sins to God, who assures us of new life through the power of Christ's redeeming love. Let us pray. Living God, we confess that our faith is sometimes weak. Our love for others can be faint. Our prayers are often timid. Our gratitude is frequently unconvincing. When we stand looking toward heaven, yet feel far from you, you draw near in your mercy. You offer us forgiveness and fill us with your power through the grace of Jesus, our resurrected Savior. Amen. Siblings in Christ, with Christ as our witness, God's power to pardon is immeasurable. Therefore, we proclaim the good news to the ends of the earth. In Christ Jesus, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Hi, everyone. It's time for our children's conversation. So if you are young in age or young in heart, please come close. I have a story that I'd like to tell you. Today in worship, we are talking about the ascension of Jesus. Now, we don't use the word ascension very often, but you can see this word show up sometimes. Like, do you ever ascend the stairs? We don't use that, but we use descend all the time. Ascend is the opposite. So today we're talking about the word ascension, which means to go up. Jesus is now going to heaven. And we think that Jesus has already done this, right? Because we remember at Easter time how Jesus was raised from the grave, how Jesus came back from death to life. And now Jesus is going to go hang out with God the Father. And I found a story. It's pretty short, but I want to read it to you. And it helps to explain the Ascension story. So would you listen with me here? I'm going to read to you about how this goes. This story is entitled Friends. And it's based on the Gospel of John in chapter 14. Friends, Jesus said, I will not always be with you. We know, grumbled the disciples. They never liked to think about the fact that Jesus was not always going to be with them. They loved being with Jesus. His stories told them so much about God. The ways that he touched other people's lives and made them healthy was so comforting. And the things that Jesus taught made so much sense. How on earth were they ever going to get along without him? I will not always be with you, said Jesus. And yet, I will. Well, that confused the disciples even more. What did Jesus mean by, I won't be with you, but I will? Then they noticed that Jesus had a twinkle in his eye. Whenever they saw that, they knew that he was going to teach them something new. I'll be gone soon, said Jesus, but I will always be with you because God's spirit will always be with you. And I am part of God's spirit. God's spirit has been right here from the very beginning of time. Remember in the story about how God created the world, how God's spirit hovered over the waters? God is never, ever far away. God is right here. So when I'm gone and you're not sure about things, stop for a moment.
pause in the midst of whatever you're doing and think about me. Think about God. Talk to one another. Remember what I have taught you. And sure enough, you will realize that God is with you and God will help you to find the answers to your questions. This helped the disciples relax a little, but Jesus could tell that they were still uncertain. You won't see me, said Jesus, but when you look inside your heart, you'll know that I never left. Somehow, even though they couldn't quite put it into words, they understood what Jesus meant. The end. So that's the story about Ascension. It's the story about how Jesus is no longer here in his body, but Jesus' spirit is here, and Jesus' spirit stays with us all the time. And through the Holy Spirit, we have God and Jesus' wisdom that's always with us. That is an amazing part of ascension. So even though Jesus' body is not here, Jesus is always here in our hearts. And that's pretty cool. Thanks for joining me today, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye-bye. Our scripture reading for this morning comes from Psalm 93. Psalm 93 is a relatively brief psalm that covers the majesty of God and God's reign. Hear now these words. The Lord is king. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed. He is girded in strength. He has established the world. It shall never be moved. Your throne is established from of old. You are from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their roaring. More majestic than the thunders of mighty waters. More majestic than the waves of the sea. Majestic on high is the Lord. Your decrees are very sure. Holiness befits your house, O Lord, forevermore. So ends the reading of the word. This is the Sunday closest to the day of Ascension of the Lord. That is the day when we celebrate that Jesus 
earthly body has now left the earthly realm and gone into heaven. When we think about the ascension, we uh, often think about it as a brief stop in the time between Easter and Pentecost. It has very little significance on our Christian calendar, even though it is theologically very important. I think in some ways, one of the, the difficulties of the ascension is that the Apostles' Creed sets it up so that even though the ascension is an important piece of it, it sort of goes along with the Easter story. We say, I believe in Jesus Christ, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again and ascended into heaven, where he sits on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. So right there in the oldest creed of the church, the one of the earliest documented uh, statements of the church, we have this sentence that sort of smooshes ascension in with the resurrection of Jesus. But there is comma there. And that comma is this time between Easter and Pentecost. So when Jesus is bodily resurrected, it is actually not on the third day. Third day he rose again, comma, ascended into heaven. Theologically very important in the Christian rhetoric, very overlooked. Okay, so you're with me so far. So this is Ascension of the Lord Sunday. And really, this is the termination of Jesus' earthly ministry. Now, it's easy to assume that his earthly ministry stopped when he died. But we know that's not the case from Scripture. Because we have these stories of people who are encountering Christ after his death when he appears on the road to Emmaus, when he appears into Jerusalem with his disciples and other people see Jesus alive, when he meets them on the shore and he eats with them. We are seeing these pieces of this resurrected, bodily present Jesus. Until the point of ascension, Jesus is really still carrying out his earthly ministry. Now, theologically, that's important because it shows the solidity and the truth of the resurrection story. So often, when we lump the resurrection with ascension, what happens here is we get this three-day period in which we say, oh, oh yeah, Jesus has arisen, yay! And people who are non-Christians say, Psh, anyone can make up a story about that. But here we have this 40-day period where Jesus is still periodically doing earthly ministry. Theologically, this is important because it strengthens the story about Jesus' resurrection. He's not seen once or twice after he di has died, but he's been seen several times. And now Jesus is leaving earth to go ascend into heaven, and when that time comes, he has promised us that he will leave the Holy Spirit with us. So 40 days after Easter, we come to Ascension, and then another 10 days later, we have the story of Pentecost, which, you know, uh, gets a little problematic when we try to figure out who exactly is taking care of us for those 10 days uh, between the 40th and the 50th, but clearly the disciples made it through that, so they must have been doing okay. But um, there are a lot of important theological implications to ascension. One of the big ones that no one um, has ever been able to come up with an answer to is how do we understand the bodily resurrection? If we believe that Christ is physically taken up into heaven, which is a repetition of a story from the Old Testament, how do we understand then our own resurrection? Are we going to somehow have a new physical body when we enter into heaven? Or are we going to discard this physical body that we have? And of course, uh, for many of us, whether or not we want our earthly body depends on whether or not our earthly body is working for us the way we'd want it to. And whether or not it works for us now as opposed to worked for us 40 or 50 years ago. 
So there's some theological implications there. Also, in Ascension, we have this correlation between God the Father and Christ the Son, who are now uh, in charge of what, what the Apostles' Creed calls the judgment. In a lot of Christian circles, we can get caught up on the judgment. And now we have wrapped Jesus into it. Not only is God the Father the one who is judging us, but now Jesus is judging us. And it seems as though Jesus is judging us based on what he did on earth. Um, and that can be quite tricky for us because Jesus set a high bar. Good news is Holy Spirit's coming. That's going to be on Pentecost. For Ascension, what is happening here? As Jesus leaves this physical plane and goes into the heavens, we are talking about first how Christ fits into the role of heaven and eventually our theology around the Trinity. And we are also addressing the issue here of how it is that Christ intercedes on our behalf. These are big theological topics, but also part of this ascension story. I'm not going to get too far into it because good and great scholars have debated this ad nauseum for the last 2,000 years. I could certainly point you towards some text if you ever get bored and want to look it up. But this is theologically significant. Jesus comes to judge the quick and the dead. Of course, we understand quick to be a very old word for someone who has a heartbeat. You can sometimes find the word quickening in literature still. But Jesus is judging the living and the dead, and Jesus is sitting on the right hand of God. Jesus is sending the Holy Spirit to now intercede on our behalf and to continue to lead us as Christ has led us when he was on earth. We have the setup here for our understanding of the Trinity, that we now have God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It takes a while for our theology to sort of meld them together, but here's the genesis. This is where it really starts. Now we can go back to the Old Testament and we can find examples of the Holy Spirit and the breath of God, even in the earliest chapters of Genesis where God breathes life into Adam, uh, the way in which the, uh, the breath of God comes in, that um, eventually becomes spirit language for the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost as we understand it. And of course, in the Old Testament, we have references to the Messiah, the one who will come and free the people of God. But with the ascension, we now have them molding and melding into a triangle of beings who are one and three. It's not a perfect picture of our theology, but we're getting closer to understanding how it is that these three pieces work. God, the one who has created us. Christ, the one who has redeemed us for, from our sins and the spirit that sustains us. Indeed, that is the language that we use when we are talking about the Holy Spirit, the God the Father and Christ the Son. We call them the creator, the redeemer, and the sustainer. In fact, that's sometimes used in baptisms even to replace God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We've laid out their jobs. And now we have to wait for the Holy Spirit to show up a few days later after Jesus has departed. It's not a, a full picture of the Ascension, but it is a little bit more, more detail than we sometimes get on Ascension Sunday that I wanted to share with you. As you are celebrating Memorial Weekend, I hope that you in your lives and in your homes find a moment to to look around and see where it is that the Holy Spirit is blessing you, to see where it is that the Trinity is entering in, in the things of creation that are around us. 
in the pieces of redemption that give us comfort and guidance and in the ways that the Holy Spirit sustains us. Friends, blessings to you this Memorial Weekend. May God follow you wherever you go. This Ascension Sunday, we remember that God has given us the gift of Christ, risen and ascended for the life of this world. Therefore, we offer our gifts in return, that others may know this glorious news. Let us pray. O God, we give you thanks for the gift of your Son. We thank you for his power at work in our lives. Bless these gifts for the benefit that they afford in bringing life to others in your name. Bless our lives that we may be your witnesses to the ends of the earth, as we love and serve you, O God Most High. Amen. Remembering the needs of our hearts and the needs of those around us, we come together in prayer. We pray for our world, for all leaders, people, and nations. We pray that leaders and nations may exercise a spirit of wisdom in serving the common good. Shield all who suffer from the terrors of violence and war, and especially care for those who are suffering from illness and who are mourning deaths. Make us one family gathered up in your love and clothed in the power of your peace. We pray for all who long to experience the immeasurable power of your love. Open our hearts to sing your praises and to share the story of your blessings. Let the people of every place know the joy and peace of our living and ascended Christ. Bless your people everywhere with food, shelter, health care, 
and employment sufficient for flourishing. Let us thrive together in the riches of your grace. With Christ, in Christ, and in communion with the Holy Spirit, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, now go in peace. And may the peace of our resurrected and ascended Lord follow you wherever you go. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you peace. Amen. Thank you.